have a chance to multiply as a result of this. And as opportunists, they take advantage of the situation with the suppressed immune system. Signs and symptoms can include diarrhea, uh, bladder pain, which would be dysuria, uh, painful urination, or an abnormal uh, vaginal discharge. So again, this can indicate a yeast infection. In addition, host factors can influence the choice of antibiotics. We need to take into consideration such things as their immune system status, the local conditions that may be present in terms of symptoms at the infection site, as well as the perfusion or circulation to the area, um, allergic reactions, the individual's age, pregnancy, and also genetics. <clears throat> With penicillin, our uh, prototype drug is penicillin G, which is known as pentids, and its mechanism of action is to kill bacteria by disrupting their cell walls. It's primarily a drug of choice against streptococci, pneumococci, and also staphylococci organisms that do not produce the enzyme penicillinase. It's also um, a medication of choice for the treatment of the sexually transmitted infections of gonorrhea and also syphilis. In addition, adverse effects associated with uh, penicillin can include such things as diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, super infections, and also anaphylaxis. With the cephalosporins, our uh, prototype drug is cephotaxim, uh, which is also known as clafarin. It works to um, its broad spectrum activity against gram-negative organisms, and again, it's indicated for serious infections of the lower respiratory tract, the central nervous system, genitourinary systems, and also infections of bone, blood, and also joints. Adverse effects of the cephalosporins include hypersensitivity, anaphylaxis, diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, and pain at the injection site. With regard to tetracycline, um, again, our prototype is tetracycline. Uh, another name for this is acromycin. It is effective against broad range of gram-positive as well as gram-negative organisms, and it can be used for treating chlamydia, rickettsia, and also my mycoplasm. Um, Adverse effects can include superinfections, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, discoloration of teeth, and also photosensitivity. With the macrolides, our prototype drug is erythromycin. It also goes by names of emycin and erythrocin. And again, it acts, uh, its spectrum is going to be similar to that of penicillin. It is also effective against gram positive bacteria. It's primarily indicated for Bordetella pertussis, also known as whooping cough, and corny bacterium diphtheriae, um, as well as most gram-positive bacteria. The adverse effects of the macrolides can include nausea, abdominal cramping, vomiting, and also diarrhea. I would just reiterate here that, again, nausea is not a symptom of an allergic reaction. Uh, the most severe in terms of adverse effects of macrolide administration is hepatotoxicity. With the aminoglycosides, our prototype drug is gentamicin. This also uh, is referred to as garamicin. Um, it acts as a broad spectrum antibiotic and it also is bactericidal. With regard to our macrolides, again, just to reiterate, these are used for serious urinary, respiratory, nervous, or GI infections. These are often used in combination with other antibiotics. And again, these can be used parenterally or as drops for eye infections. Adverse effects of the macrolides include ototoxicity and also nephrotoxicity. With fluoroquinolones, an example, our prototype is ciprofloxacin, which is also known as Cipro. Its mechanism of action is to inhibit bacterial DNA gyrase. This affects bacterial replication and also DNA repair. Uh, cephalo, or excuse me, the fluoroquinolones are primarily indicated for respiratory infections, bone and joint infections, GI infections, ophthalmic infections, as well as sinusitis and prostatitis. Adverse effects include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, phototoxicity, headache, and also dizziness. 
With the sulfonamides, our prototype is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. This also goes by Bactrim.